that song. Uh, Jim and I, we used to uh, rehearse uh, down on Broadway, right above the Continental Baths. And we were rehearsing Crying Out Loud. And there had been a young man, uh, a Broadway star named Andre de Shields, who had sang that song before me. And we were rehearsing, and Jim started to say to me, this will give you the idea of our personalities. Uh, I'm Mars, he's Venus. Uh, he said, uh, listen, Andre sang it like this. And I looked at him and I went, don't you ever tell me how somebody else sang the song. And I proceeded to turn the piano up on its side. Now, Jim sat on the stool very calmly, his feet still on the pedals. <laughs> so the piano was on its side, and the pedals were on the ground, just like they should be. Now, I had chewed gum because I have dry throat every performance I've ever done, including Shakespeare in the Park. And uh, so I quickly chewed a lot of pieces of gum, and we attached the pedal board back to the piano with chewing gum. That is Jimmy. And uh, I'm just going to say this. Jimmy, I call him Jim Bob. Jimmy is like no other songwriter. I consider him, and I got my education from Jim Steinman. I'm a good old uh, Southern boy who grew up on chicken fried steak and white gravy. And when I came to New York to do hair on Broadway, I used to say I'm going down to the theater. And, uh, and Armand Coulet, who was a director at that point, said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the theater. He said, no, it's theater. I said, yeah, that's what I said, theater. And uh, so I got my education from Jimmy, and I think my daughter Amanda's IQ of 163 came from Jimmy, which I'm going to question about that later. <laughs> Uh, I don't consider Jim an ordinary songwriter. He is more in the line of someone that I consider the second best writer, period, in history, right behind William Shakespeare. And his name is Samuel Beckett. Now, Jimmy, like Samuel Beckett, has a handle on the human condition. Jimmy, like Samuel Beckett, has a flair for the dramatic as well as the epic, which is obvious in Bad Out of Hell. I'd do anything for love, paradise by the dashboard, life for crying out loud, total eclipse of the heart, uh, the Celine Dion song, which I need more fish oil. Uh, <laughs> and, but what people really never understood at the time was that singing Jim Steinman songs allowed me, because I don't consider myself a musician, I consider myself an actor, and singing Jim Steinman songs allowed me to be the actor that, um, that, uh, that I am, and um, even allowed me to sing out of time, which was really good. And... Um, <laughs> But what he didn't, what he, him and Beckett had in common is the wit, the humor, and the wink of the eye. Because that's what Jim Steinman's songs are. They're loaded with humor. And that's why Jim and I are in a Vulcan mind meld together artistically. Uh, we are completely different other ways. But... That's what they didn't understand about Bad Out of Hell when it came out, was the humor. Well, I mean, I sang it as serious as I possibly could. I mean, I was deadly serious, and I was serious up there. But I'll tell you what, we, it's tongue in cheek all the way, but the audience has got it. And between Bad Out of Hell, Bad Out of Hell 2, Dead Ringer, Greatest Hits, and every album I've ever done with a Jim Steinman song on it, me personally, we're close to 100 million records. And, uh, let me give you that uh, Now, I'll tell you, you may, okay, hang on, you applaud, but let me tell you what that gets you. When a restaurant is full, 
you call up for a reservation, you say Meatloaf would like to come, they get you in. That's all bad. <laughs> uh, we, we, 